Hey everyone, Bethany here and Sparky with Ask a Puppy Trainer Show. This is, oh, episode, I don't know. I think it's 41. 42? 45, you're oh. way off. Here, those you are tore yours. tore the paper. Those are yours. Okay. All right. Okay, so we got some good ones for you today. We're going to jump right in, but you guys know how you ask questions. And, oh, this is Rosie. Isn't Rosie adorable? Hello, Rosie. Hello. My lip gloss, it smells delicious. Watch out, she eats poop. She no, I'm just kidding, she doesn't. I'm kidding. He does that all the time. It's not funny. It's, it's, okay, so you guys remember Dakota, my German Shepherd, she was on here a while back, and he was like, oh my God, her breath is awful. It's because she had just eaten anchovies, which was awesome timing. She licked me right in my mouth. Yeah. Like, on mouth. the live, and he just had to sit there and you say take nothing it. and take it. Mm -hmm. It's <laughs> okay, <all> horrible. <laughs> oh, I see, that's my karmic justice. That's your karmic justice. Oh, yep. I love it. All right. All the jokes. Do you want to start with those? Those are a little bit more heavy, mine. or do you want to start with mine, which are a little bit more light? Uh, let's just get into the heavy. Get it. All right. Uh, blog. No, not a blog. Yes, from the blog. Why and how to crate train your puppy. That was the blog, by the way. All right. The question is, we have just brought home our new puppy and he's a little star. Oh, that's such a cute way to describe a puppy. All right. Be well behaved, loving his toys. Only thing is we're struggling with crate. As soon as we shut the gate, the gate and walk away. His crying is hysterical. His little heart beats so fast. What's the best way to get him calm and be able to leave him for longer periods of time? Well, I don't know. So for me, crate training is not just for me, for him too, whatever. Crate training is like a way of life. So what I mean by that is truly the dog sleeps in crate, spends several hours during the day in crate, not just to learn um, separation and independence, but also for potty training. So, so this dog spends more time in crate than anywhere else the first few weeks because they should be sleeping 20 hours a day anyway. It's when they're not sleeping 20 hours to 18 to 20 hours a day, under five months old, that they become overstimulated and they, they have this need to play and be entertained constantly. The same thing happens with kids. So or, first, and that's not just dogs who are doing crate training. That's every dog. Every, every dog. young puppy yeah. should be doing 18 to 20 hours of sleeping a day, which they don't do unless you're doing some kind of crating. Yeah. Even if your dog is outside the crate, sleeping dead asleep on the carpet in front of you, try standing up and walking out of the room. Tell me what happens. That dog is probably going to follow you. 95%. Yeah. Keep going. Sorry. So, no, no, it's fine. Did you just say sorry for interrupting I know, me? I know. You it's it's because Kimberly's doing the live today. Are you trying to be funny? She makes me nicer. Oh, I'm like thrown off now. I don't know what to do. What was I saying? But I think continue, I guess. Okay. Does that make you feel better? Well, yeah, I'm already thrown off. Okay, well, you better crate, get back in your zone, crate, girl. Crate training, hysterical dog. Okay, so <laughs> I don't like it. I think our mics aren't working. Are we good? <laughs> Are we good? Okay. Okay. So, um, all right. So that's just keep that in mind. First off. The second thing I'd like to say, if your puppy's not in the hardcore chewing phase yet, and what I mean by that is, you know, he's not destroying things like crazy, you want to make sure the crate is really warm. So you could do that with a lot of old towels, or you could get an old fashioned, I say old fashioned, they use them on farms all the time, but you could get a heating lamp. Um, you could even do, I don't love saying this, um, the, heating say the heating pad, blanket. but underneath, pad, yeah. underneath stuff. But what was the other one? Someone used a hot water bottle, right? Yeah, hot water bottle. Hot, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, you need some warmth. There you I don't think they put that in the crate though, they? put they? it underneath blankets. Yeah, underneath yeah. blankets. Okay. Uh, or underneath the You just gotta be towels. careful they don't, they're not bottle chewers because if they open up the hot water, it's it could hurt them. Yeah, it goes Or it could soak everything. <laughs> So anyway, there's there's a lot of uh, you know pluses and minuses to this, but they need some warmth. You need to cover the crate fully, not just three sides of it. If you're struggling, hopefully you've got good air circulation. You want to cover the crate fully. Um, play some TV sitcoms are great for this, or play some music, some like uh, uh, I about said Mozart, but just some classical music along with a man. You really threw me off my game. Um, a white noise machine. And so the white noise machine drowns out sounds. The classical music can be good for dogs to calm them down, just like kids, stuff like that. So you really do need to go to great lengths. I do all of this with every dog right from the mm -hmm. beginning. And then if you've done all that and you're not holding and getting your puppy excited all day long, I know you said he's great with toys, but I hope that the toy play is minimal compared to the training. focused training, building focus. What is your ratio? Go ahead, go with your numbers. Oh, I love it. 
I know. I am personally a four to one ratio man, meaning that if I do five minutes of love, 10 minutes of training before, 10 minutes of training after. That is my ratio. What about the play? You said love, you mean play too? Yeah, love to play ratio. So if they're gonna give five minutes of affection, proceed and end it with more training. Yep. You're basically trying to build a really, really strong foundation of training behind that affection because dogs that have over affection tend to get a little bit of separation anxiety. But oh, uh, And he means this play, is, he means yes, play, play too. So they're, they're kind of the same thing because play, you gotta imagine everybody at home, if you didn't know this, you're about to learn something new. What play does to a puppy is like wolves who play fight as puppy wolves until they get big. They're playing to fight like big dogs. So with puppies, whenever they play fetch, they're playing to go kill an animal and bring it back. Or if you're you know, a hunter, they go and get an animal that's already been hunted and bring it back to you. That's what they're practicing. That's why dogs love fetch. And it does fulfill a primal need. But we have to make sure that we're not accidentally nurturing that need like crazy and creating um, higher energy, high strung, highly aroused dogs. Like this one. Like, what that literally just watched the dog looks like a little rabbit. <laughs> um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go for a darker side because normally darker. you're the one that covers the darker side. So, Abby, some dogs are kidding. just pr yeah right. You took a while. We have 20 more questions. Whatever. Some dogs are just prone to having separation anxiety, oh, yeah. and maybe it's not even that. Maybe it's just we're giving a little too much affection before and after crate time. Which, if you give too much affection, why would a dog want to go in the crate if they just got a lot of love? And or, I, I or see a couple things. Yes, or, or excitement. excitement. Thank you. That does matter too. And I see crying is hysterical. His little heart beats fast. So stressed. I might think that the dog is stressed out, but then let me ask you this. Do you ever bring the dog out and give affection and kind of coddle them through that heart, that fast heart rate, the hysterical barking? Because if we are, we're rewarding the hysterical barking. We're rewarding all those nervous behaviors. I know, I just ate crackers, thank you. Delicious. Put some salt on my fingers. Delicious. We're rewarding those bad behaviors and we're rewarding the anxious behaviors. So I'm gonna just be very straightforward with you. You might have a dog that barks and cries in the crate. Sometimes you just gotta ignore it. Let them be in a different room from you. Uh, Walk-in closets are amazing. If you put it like some ventilation there, a fan, bathroom, bathroom too. Bathtub, I like even. I like the walk-in closet because the, all the the like I agree. blankets and yep. the coats, Clothes, yeah. natural soundproofing. Yeah. And it's not just for you guys. I'm not just trying to make your life easier. I'm trying to make your puppy's life easier mm -hmm. by putting her in there, him, her, whatever it is. She can't hear as much. I know, she can't hear cool. as much noise. Like, it does. Well, a lot of people are like, oh. <laughs> and I'm like, no, 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 guys. It's it's not a human. It's it's a pup. It's a dog. Yeah. And to them, you're giving them a den. Just like you're to use the the primal reference of the, mm -hmm. like the baby wolves. They live in a den for 18, 20 years, hours a day. They literally come out to hunt, forage, and mate. That's it. So obviously, we don't have them in that order at home. But you want to give them something that's a little bit more primal and down to the roots of what they they would be used to in the wild, which is a quiet, calm room that if they're nervous, they kind of just work through the anxiety. Um, the more training you do, the less affection, less play, more training will help balance them out a little bit. There will be, they'll be a little bit more tired. You can play with the dog for hours and you basically build an Usain Bolt of all dogs. Mm -hmm. Endurance is crazy high. Mentally, like used to being overly stimulated mm -hmm. and higher 24 endurance. seven. We need to move on. You're taking forever. All these questions are the same. So I can literally they reference really? this one. I haven't yes. seen him, I haven't seen him. So basically what you're trying to do is you're trying to, oh, hello there. Hello. You're trying to mentally tire out your dog rather than physically exert them to where they build up endurance. And in six weeks, you have a dog that needs to play for multiple hours instead of 10, 15 minutes with a balance of training on top of that. Okay. So be more business-like. 20 minutes before crate, 20 minutes after crate, you're very business-like. Come out of crate. Make sure you're doing your threshold work too. I mean, that's how you teach um, a lot of uh, impulse control is waiting at crate threshold, door threshold, food bowl. Like you've got to start doing, not that you're not, I mean, I, I don't know, but make sure you're doing a lot of training where you're already teaching impulse control as well as uh, all the other stuff we said. Nothing lives in a vacuum. Everything works together and you still might have that puppy that is genetically more needy. Just make sure you're not feeding into it yeah. and uh, keep us posted. I hope I hope things improve, but uh, definitely keep us posted in a couple of weeks how things look. That can be challenging too. Do yep. you have your Instagram up so we can read these questions coming I in? I can't, my, my, for some reason, I think some people have like private settings. What does it say? Can I apply these things to an older dog three years? Absolutely. Yeah, it might even be easier to do it to an older dog because they tend to take the new things a little bit quicker. And, and you can do some stuff like, hey, you know, knock it off. 
uh, pet corrector. Not on the dog, the crate. Oh, the yeah. crate. That was the crate. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Ricky's watching this from Las Vegas. Like, how could She's she like, do oh that? Oh my God! Please clarify, somebody. Clarify. <laughs> okay, let's move on. Okay. That was loud. God, I know, it's you're so freaking loud. I have to be loud, otherwise we keep going. Do you sing? You have like the resonance when you yell. No, 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 move no, 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 no,
and crate and then 30 minutes of free time until mm -hmm. the point to where we do two hours in crate, two hours out of the crate. Granted, those are for dogs that are usually two and a half, three months into the program near the end of it and they're really upping it. You could they're do like, all- They're like six, seven, eight, nine- Months. Months old. And you could even go up to like four or five hours at that age mm -hmm. or even a little bit more if you have a specific work day, but you gotta try it out first. You can't just be like, oh, Sparky said I could do four hours. Put them in four hours, you're cleaning up a potty accident. Yay. Yeah. And you'll know if you're pushing too fast too soon because you'll get multiple potty accidents. That's how you know we can just tell how much they can hold it. And I don't know if you're regulating water. If you live, it's, oh. if it's the middle of summer in Arizona, that dog always has water and crate, even if it's a puppy. So, you know, you, there's got to be some, you know, give and take. Oh, someone's getting fussy. She doesn't like you. She wants me. She just too like me. Not as much. Only the chest rub you're giving. Whatever. She wants to eat my hair still. Yeah, it good. it's the beard. It's yeah. the beard. But anyway, hopefully that gives you some ideas and uh, yeah. Okay, now let's get to the other seven yeah. questions we have. <laughs> we put this little one up now that she's getting fussy. Uh, can we also have your phone? Because it has all these questions popping up. Okay, cool. Oh, she's seeing something. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. All right. From Nohimi. I feel like that's a, someone who's been back here multiple times. Welcome back. My, my dog is one year old and she eats my other dog's poop. Is Yay, what can I do? Uh, she needs to be on leash anytime she goes outside. There's no free access to get outside and there's no free access to the potty area. Anytime your, your one year old goes out to go potty, on leash and you're controlling that leash. No access means no ability to eat the poop. Uh, is it normal? For some dogs it is. Um, she already said her older dog we, did we it. We actually talked about this on last week's it's live. true, we did. We and did. so if you see that kind of question, you can kind of check out the more thorough answer. There's mm -hmm. things you can get to put on you know, your dog, you like to have your dog eat, maybe they won't eat it. It works maybe 20% of the time. Some yeah. dogs just like eating poop. It's it not, could have been a deficiency. It's and not necessarily a deficiency though. It, let me finish. It could have been a deficiency. Yes. And then as they started eating more poop to feel like they're filling that need, then we up the diet, we fix the diet, they're but now they got it. used to it. That's my, habit. that's my rescue German Shepherd. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It just happens. It is what yeah. it is. Okay, and go back to the last Instagram live. It has more details just because we're low on time. Because Beth didn't talk a lot. Whatever. All right, Kelm Amanda. My puppy no longer wants to play with toys when she loved them before. Why? Well, that's very possible that maybe we gave too many toys. I actually recycle my toys. I don't give more than two toys at a time. And usually two to three times a week, I'll take one toy away, add a new toy to the, to the pile. Take a different toy away, add a different toy to the pile. She's not getting new toys. I'm recycling them every three or four days. They get bored. But yeah. I don't think that's what it is. What do you think? Although I think that's good advice for anybody out there. Thanks, Beth. I don't, th I don't think that's what it is. Um, I don't know what it is, but I don't think that's it. Try a squeaker toy. Normally, I'm not a fan of squeaker toys because you know what a squeaker sounds like? <laughs> Things. Yeah, okay. Anyway. Ricky's, however, Ricky's dying Ricky's right now. Dying, yeah. Yeah. Um, however, if I'm trying to motivate a dog, I might try a squeaky toy. I had a puppy recently where squeaking it uh, several times scared the puppy. This is definitely not oh. a little savage puppy at all. Yeah, not not and a hunting so, dog. Yeah, not a hunting dog. <laughs> and so we got rid of the rid of the squeaker and had to build him back up. It actually took a few days. I actually sat on it, and so it was like. It, it, anyway, it was a whole thing and it scared the puppy. So, I don't know, something like that could have happened that you're not even aware of. Um, the other thing is, are you playing outside or inside? Maybe your puppy is now more of an adolescent and they're too distracted or going through a fear phase and too distracted and so they're not as interested in it anymore. Build back up the drive inside. The other thing I would say is once you are able to build back up some drive, uh, make sure you cap some control on that right away. Sit, drop it, wait, place, throw it, permission to go get it, like layer those steps on very quickly if you do get that drive back. I hope you do, play is really fun. Dogs don't have to be happy to play, I do wanna say that. But uh, but yeah, I don't know, it's a bit of a conundrum. Try, I'm really interested, who is this, Kelm? Amanda Kelm, um, try some of these things and come back because I'd be really interested to get some more details on this situation. Age, breed, uh, things like that, maybe. Temperament. Temperament, if your puppy is teething, it might be uncomfortable. The toys were fine before, they're not now. It could be a few things, we just need more details. Okay. That was great advice, I don't even give my dog toys, so. 
probably not the right person to go over that one. Yeah, you're not even you're not even nice. I'm not a nice person. I know. No, he's got like some wolf dog that wouldn't do anything with it anyway. Well, she kills it. She she actually murders the toys. So I'm not trying to harness that type of drive. Yeah, I want to bring that down. <laughs> uh, okay. Kamal's day. Days Kamal? I don't know. Uh, teaching puppy drop it. Any tips? Nipping, redirecting, but any other tips to stop puppy? Yes, that's my favorite ooh, one. Ooh. Okay. So, okay. first of all, make sure you're doing tug. All right. Well, you don't even play, so what do you know about this? I know how to get a dog to drop it. Yeah. <laughs> Not to play, though. I don't, I don't promote that. So, um, make sure you have a... You don't promote that. Oh, I can't. I just can't even with this one. <laughs> so, make sure it's a long enough toy where you can get both hands on the side and your dog, your puppy, it should be a puppy, can uh, grab it in the middle. So, first, you kind of move it around. Then, don't pull it too hard if your puppy still has puppy teeth. Anyway grabs onto it, grab both sides. When you're moving, when you're soft and moving, that means, you know, the puppy thinks you're interacting and playing with them. Even if you're yelling no and drop it and drop it, they don't believe you. Energy so. is energy. And if you have high energy yelling no, they're like, yeah, this is great play. This is fun, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm beating you, this is fun. Um, so when you're ready, stop saying drop it, first of all. There's, stop it. They don't know drop it. They don't know drop it. So uh, take, once you're, this is me moving around with my puppy. Then tuck your elbows in. You need to be seated. I don't know how big your puppy is, but seated, squatted down, something like that. And just freeze. And you're gonna wait your puppy out. Some really, really intense pups will continue to pull and growl and maybe escalate. And the mo and, but they will eventually get bored. And so you might be waiting a bit that very first time, but you gotta tuck your elbows into your rib cage because they can't have any give. Okay, and it should be a puppy, so it shouldn't be strong enough to where that's that's hard. It's like it's a two hundred pound Malamute, you know. It's cool. <laughs> there are no two hundred. Oh, Malamute. Thought you said Malinois. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, so freeze, and then when your puppy gets bored and drops it, just say good and pull up, block if they're going at hands or anything. Maybe if you have food on you, you reach for the food. Sit really quickly. Good. Give food. Break. Give it back. And that's all you do. You never throw it. You never give it back to them until the moment you go still, they just start letting go because they start to associate the body language with dropping it and then they get it back. When that gets easier, then start to say drop it when they let go. And then when that gets easier in a few days or a few weeks, then try saying drop it um, right when you do this. Never, well, I shouldn't say never. I guess it would be a really good challenge. Most but often we don't, you won't. Mo yeah, most often you won't be able to be moving around and say drop it and your dog pay attention because your body language isn't saying that. It's advanced work to be it's able to get that. It's very advanced work. It's like adult, you know, uh, adult dog. Anyway, you could also try this with um, a ball, but you want to do tug first because you want to have possession over it. Anyway, once that gets really good, then you can do th small throws. Then you can do bigger throws. Teach your puppy place. So you can teach come, place, drop it, pick up toy, throw it. All right. The nipping no, and the no, redirecting. No. No, 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 you didn't go over this. The nipping and the redirecting. Um, redirecting is great, but that only works for usually about 15, 20% of dogs, and they can't be super, super high drive. Yes, food, food, sit, good. While they're nipping. I'm not going to reward the nipping. One block. I'm, yeah, but the blocking. So blocking is spatial pressure. If... That's a, that's a block. If this is me, this is the dog, whether they're jumping, nipping, or barking, you're going to step in, no, and kind of invade their space. You're trying to take the space and claim it for your own, and the second you do that, sit. Are you are you acting out the hand? Oh, thank you. you wait, me. you did this the other day? I know. So it's so weird. annoying. I hate it. So Don't do weird. it. Bug off. All right. Step in, no, sit, good. Pause. Don't reward yet because now you're rewarding for the no and then the sit. You want to actually create that pause, come, sit, good, few seconds after it, then reward, and try to turn that brain from bite mode, nip mode, into training mode. But also sometimes, you just can't control that energy. It might just be too high. Teach place. Teach place or take a deep breath. Yeah and give them a little nap in the crate. Sometimes yeah. they just, they got too much of something. Young pups can only be out of the crate for about 20, 30 minutes before they just crash and they start biting everything. Yeah, only do 10 to 15 minutes of this. But seriously, if it's mm -hmm. that bad, like he said, um, then don't play fetch for three, four days and teach mm -hmm. place. Yep. Teach place, sit, and, and staying in place. Then when you go back to fetch, oh my God, it will be so much easier. Okay. All right, How do right you go. Ryko the Doodle. 
this dog looks really young, so I'm assuming, okay, four month old. So we're taking our four month old golden, golden doodle on a six hour road trip, any tips? Oh, okay. But there's a secondary question too. We will be staying with family for a few days with our pup and they have two dogs as well, any advice? So let's take the first one first. We can't tackle this one for too long because we got more. So one, if I'm gonna put a dog in the, in the car for six hours, one of the most common things that people do that I think is a mistake is they put that dog on their lap for all six hours. Oh, I don't do That's that. like separation anxiety central. You've literally conditioned your dog to like hunker down and attach to you. Don't do that. Start crate training your dog in the car. Yeah. Get them on a schedule. Yeah. This is also how you get them to pee on command. So when you have to take those two hour okay. breaks in the car, maybe three, four hours, driving it's a little bit different than yeah. being at home. I would do, I'd do three to four. Yeah. yeah, you can literally take that dog out on a leash, be like, go potty, and they go potty on gravels, wood chip, concrete, grass, whatever you have. Most, most road stops don't have grass. Most of the time they're a gas station with gravel or dirt. <laughs> That's because so. you live in the West. <laughs> so, I don't, I don't travel that much. I work oh a lot. My God. But I'm just saying, you want to get them used to multiple environments. Stop laughing over the camera. Why is everyone laughing? Where's Ricky? I want Ricky back. Okay. Um, do you want to tackle anything more on that yes, one? Yes, yes. I have oh. more to say. So make sure, nice. yes. Uh, I Unless you already know that your four-month-old is pretty good, you know, in the car, like can go to the back and lay down and maybe your one of your kids is back there, you know, helping it chill out, not coddling it, then that's fine. It can be loose, but I, I would go crate. Four-month-old doodle, not, not to stereotype a doodle or anything, but... Eh, wild. So just stick them in a crate so they can you can help teach them how to be calm in long car rides. Um, but but the same rules apply. So when you stop at that you know rest area that has no grass, um, please <laughs> please please make them wait at the front door just like at home before getting permission to come out. I don't care if you've got a cloth zip up. All right, you're going to, you know, unzip it and fold it up. And when they push through, no, and, and put it back down. So that boundary is important. Also, your car. Practice your car boundary. Door opens, you still have to wait. Pick up a leash, you still have to wait for permission to either come out of the car or even be picked up. Don't just open the door, pick up the puppy, put on the leash, put them down. You're not teaching your puppy anything. Make sure they wait at the opening of the door. Put the leash on, they wait again. Then you either pick them up or invite them out. Same thing going back in the car. And then whenever you go home and you've got those dogs, we don't know. Are those dogs friendly? Or do they have any training? Are they gonna overwhelm your puppy? Because that's not fair. Is your puppy gonna get so amped up by being around them that your puppy becomes nippy and bitey, which is what we see the most. So what I would say is give them five, 10, maybe 15 minutes if things are going well of free time together that's play, if assuming the other dogs play, but take a crate with you. Of course, you'll have your crate in your car, mm -hmm. but uh, take a crate with you or make sure they have a crate in a room away from everybody where your puppy can truly rest. And if anything, you do more training while you're at your folks' home because you're, I don't know if they're parents or whatever. they like parents. Parents. Oh, no, they, family. They might spoil your puppy, which um, I could, I'd like to tell you don't allow, but I know that's really hard. They're not inviting you over to come visit. They want, they they want the puppy, puppy. yeah. Come so if anything, you're doing more leash work, more training to counteract that freedom, love, and affection. And uh, okay, now yours. Okay. Chrissy Palumbo. How do we get our puppy to play nice with our cat? And by the way, guys, this is actually one of our current students. This is Daisy. So, all right, Christy, I know your dog very well. I do most of the training for you, your dog. You have 60 seconds. And um, your dog is very high energy. Very, very high energy, very high, easily excited. Tell and she also does a lot is. of jumping. Uh, it is a Cavalier King Charles, I believe. Right? Mix? She might Cockapoo? be a cockapoo. Oh, I always get Cavaliers and, and uh, Cocker Spaniels age. mixed up. Like more age for context for Oh, everybody. she's probably like five months old, something okay. on there. Okay. So but she's young, very high, very easily jumping dog. So I would say that you need a one, have your dog on leash and you get it. You basically gotta get her used to being calm around that cat, which isn't gonna happen overnight. That usually involves putting her on place, teaching her how to exist on that place cot. I don't do a lot of food work around cats because sometimes it makes the dog a little bit more territorial of the food, which can create a little bit of reactivity, but I will do something like help them calm down. And sometimes I'll just have them sit on a leash, have a shorter leash, and then when the, just basically teach the cat that it can walk by without being molested by the dog every single time, without being jumped on, without being nipped at. I said place. Oh, sorry, place, in case you missed that like I did, place. 
just to help them be a little bit more calm. That's the biggest one. You wanna help the cat learn that the dog isn't gonna always go after it every single time it comes in the room. Dogs that prey drive cat kind of look like prey in those situations. Yeah. They learn the hard way not to mess with the cats, but we don't want the cat to have to teach the dog that lesson because it's kind of starting off on the wrong foot for that relationship. Yeah. Okay, and guys, that is all the no, time. No, 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 it's oh, not. Make the cat tree off limits. So <laughs> make sure that, you know, if Daisy goes up to the cat tree, that's a no. And I don't know if you've done any, and that would be one of the oh, few Oh, like no things. paws on the cat tree. Yeah, like no, no the cat sniffing face. it. Cat tree, respect cat. Um, we sometimes use pet corrector for that kind of thing. I don't know if you've been shown how to do that. It just nope, squirts out air and it makes a noise. So if your dog is being disrespectful of a cat tree, anybody out there, a pet corrector can help with that. You say no first, no, and then make the little ch noise with the can. Uh, it's louder than what, what we can do, so it is better for that. And do some recalls off the cat. So if the cat is stationary, hanging out on the back of the couch, and you're about to take your dog out, Put them on leash like he said and before you do your place duration maybe do just a few recalls off the cat and and move back and engage your dog like all the training that you've learned start to use it with distract distractions you'll learn um, that on your next what, lesson what, 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 what? what'd you say what she's also learning that in her next lesson oh and you're gonna learn that in your next lesson yeah. daisy's mom so all right cool and do we have anything we should address on the questions any idea what to put in picky dog's food that doesn't like to eat besides wet food um, uh, what just to stop put, putting the wet food. Wait, what, what to put in a dog's food that's not wanting to eat? Do we have like an age or anything like that? And is that besides wet food? Or are they already putting They're wet food in? They're already trying wet, yeah. They're so if I have a dog that's not even eating wet food, that means you have a really, no, really picky dog. No, wet food. They won't eat anything else. So I would just give it dry. So dogs can actually go, I'm just going to freak some people out, up to three days without eating, especially if they've got some weight on them. But with puppies, you got to be careful about that. So I don't know the age of this dog. The challenge is that when dogs eat wet food, it's like, uh, it's a bad example, but think of going and eating a salad versus having a burger. The wet food has a lot more calories. It's a little bit more tasty. Having, it's a lot more tasty. I know. Well, I'm, I'm trying to be nice about it. But it is a lot more valuable to dogs than the kibble is. But we don't like wet food because wet food kind of tends to be a crutch for some dogs. Mm -hmm. So we eliminate the wet food. Completely. We just give them the kibble. And then usually we'll just recycle a few of those meals throughout the day until they eventually eat it. Here's the thing, guys. Dogs eat hungry. Unless it's a husky, huskies will start on themselves. So if it's a husky, don't do what we're saying. Talk to your vet. But or if it's, if it's any a other puppy breed, that's struggling with weight issues. Small yes. breed puppy struggling with weight issues. But most of time, eliminate the wet food and just see how long they last. They if you get, go over do. a couple days, then you might need to figure out a different solution. But yeah, check back in with If they're next teething, week. Um, take the kibble and soak it oh, yeah. in Let a little it. bit of chicken broth so it gets spongy. Yep. And you got to literally soak it for about five minutes to absorb all of it. Yep. Okay, guys. Are we good? We have two more. Yeah, two more? yeah, yeah, real quick. Uh, picking our pup this weekend, we need the calmest pup for our family. Is there a way to tell at four weeks? We don't take him home until April 8th. Also, does it matter if it's a male or female? For four weeks is a little young, isn't it, to uh, be able to tell? I've never once had a breeder allow me to pick Perfect. up a dog at four weeks. Yeah. It's, it's four weeks right now. She's not getting him until April 8th. Oh, oh, I okay. see. Okay, okay. Uh, so if you're gonna see the dog, okay. No, I was just gonna, I was gonna try to be real quick. Is uh, don't get the puppy that clobbers you. Don't get the puppy that is in the corner avoiding everybody. Get one of the puppies that are kind of in the middle, kind of chilling out. There's the whole chair thing, but uh, no breeder's gonna allow you to do that. But there's the whole thing where you put three dogs on a chair and and try to get them to stay. And the one that just keeps driving, driving to get off the chair. Don't get that one. Don't get the one that's nervous. Get the one that shows a little bit of. Focus, but breeders don't really. I wouldn't let a human, normal human, Jump do that. Off a chair. But anyway, you could talk to your breeder about what are some of the techniques that you do to pick out calmer puppies, so they can do something to help you. A out good there. breeder usually has already figured out and temperament tested a lot of their puppies. Like quality breeders is something. Quality they do breeders, naturally. but that's also hard to find. Last one: Should the crate for the car be the smaller than the one in the home? Should the crate for the car be smaller than the one in the home? It can be because your dog's not spending a ton of time in there. So if it's a little smaller, it's not that big of a deal, but it shouldn't be too terribly I like it. cramped. My crate should always be one full circle into a down. That's all the dog really is able to do. Yeah. I'm not looking for crates where they can pace back and forth. Pacing creates anxiety. Yeah. We don't want to create anxiety. We want to create calm and restfulness. I've seen some crates in cars that are like designed for the car. It touches their back a little bit. That's no big deal, but at home, you wouldn't want that. That would be one Call. adjustment. All right, guys, thank you so much. We'll see you next week. Wednesday, 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time.